Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and these are some five star prediction romance books for me. Baby, baby. I've never done a five star prediction video before just because I hate setting my expectations really high because <laughs> I feel like they're doomed to fail. But you know what, we're gonna do it because I think this video is gonna hold me accountable to actually read these books this year. So this video could also be titled books to read in 2022 because I wanna read all of these books this year. <laughs> so um, that's the goal. My goal is to read all these books this year and hopefully give them all five stars. We'll see. Um, let me know down below if you want me to post like a reading vlog of me reading these books to see if they are five stars or not. Let me know. Are y'all interested in stuff like that? I don't know. Anyway, let's dive right on into these books. Some of them are very popular and some are uh, ones that I don't see a lot of people talk about. So these are books that I think I might give five stars. This is a lot to do f with the authors, obviously, because some of these authors are some of my favorites of all time. So that's why it's on this list. So the first one I have, Gaslight Hades by Grace Draven. I have never heard anybody talk about this book, but it is a Grace Draven that I have not read yet. If you don't know, Grace Draven is the queen of fantasy romance books. I love her. She wrote my favorite romance book of all time, Radiance. And so we'll see how I feel about this one. I think this is a uh, number one in a series. This is the Bone Keeper Chronicles. And I think there's multiple books in the series. This book came out in 2017 and I've not heard anybody talk about it. I'm probably gonna read the summaries for these just because like, I don't know all that much. <laughs> so sorry. I wanna know your opinion too. Do y'all care if I read the summary or not? Like, is that like a pet peeve for some people? Let me know. Nathaniel Gordon walks two worlds, that of the living and that of the dead. Barely human, he's earned the reputation of a bone keeper, the scourge of grave robbers. He believes his old life over until one dreary burial, he meets the woman he once loved and almost married. Lenore Kenward, Kenward? Kenward, Kenward, <laughs> why did I say Kenward? Kenward stands at her father's grave, begging the protection of the mysterious guardian, not knowing he is her lost love. Resolved to keep his distance, Nathaniel is forced to abandon his plan and accompany Lenore on a journey into the mouth of hell, where sea meets sky, and the abominations that exist beyond its barrier wait to destroy them. That sounds so good. Like, I'm surprised I've never heard anybody talk about this book. Like, that sounds so stinking good. Have any of my friends read this? No, Riley marked it as to read. <laughs> oh, Tiffany Roberts loves it. Okay, Tiffany Roberts gave it five stars. Love that. I love that. Okay, Um, I can't wait to read this. The thing is like Grace Draven isn't on Kindle Unlimited and her audiobooks are few, it's just few audiobooks. So I'm gonna have to read this on my ebook and purchase it. So I'm making up excuses. I gotta stop doing that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this this year and hopefully give it five stars. Next is another author favorite. We have a book by Amanda Milo. And this is All Things to Brie from Eleven Words. Uh, we have The Quarry Master. This is book number seven in the Stolen by the Alien series. And I've read two books in the series. I read the first book in the series. Didn't really care for it all that much. Read book four or five in the series. I don't remember which number it is. And adored it. One of my favorite books of all time. So <laughs> um, we'll see what I think of this one, I think I want to read the other books in the series before I get to this. And like, I want to listen to this on audio. We'll see. Brie, do I need to read this book in order? Let me know. But yeah, this is The Quarry Master, an alien romance series. This is a, <laughs> this is a grumpy alien romantic company. Okay, Bash. I dislike people. I despise humans. A cruel mandate from one of my region's rulers has saddened me with a slew of little human aliens. I'm to put them to work. One problem, I run a rock quarry where humans' thin skin is detriment to product. Pro There's so many tongue twisters in this summary. Productivity. Overseeing these humans is like trying to herd Yankex. <laughs> I guess that's an alien animal. If I don't burn, beat, or strangle them to death by the end of the day, it will be a miracle. And then this is Isla's perspective. Isla, I can tell the boss likes me because I'm not dead. Bash is abrasive and, what is that word? Acer acerbic? I don't know that word, I'm so sorry, I'm dumb. Um, like an alien love child of Michael Caine and Miss Hannigan, and maybe Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Bash is a little anti-human race, but he's not all bad. Sure, he's a little growly and he sets things on fire when he gets mad, but even villains need a friend. And here, Bash is everyone's villain, everyone but mine. So apparently it's a slow, 
burn romance and I think Brie told me that the heroine in here is an amputee I think don't don't count me on that but I think um I love Amanda Milo there's only been one book that I've read by her that I didn't adore which is the first book in this series so I'm hoping that I just love this one because Brie loves it and I love any of the romance books and this just sounds amazing next is for my girls Jen and Crystal <laughs> They love Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas and we'll see how I feel about this one because I'm just so excited and I don't want to overhype it and then be disappointed in it. It says it's book seven in the Ravenels. However, the heroine here is like the daughter to one of the couples from the Wallflower series. So I'm pretty interested to read about how this incorporates into the Ravenels series. Um, so Jen told me the best way to read this book is if you read all the Ravenels and you read all the Wallflowers, which I have now done. Um, so yay me. <laughs> um, so I'm ready to read this. I'm just nervous as heck. <laughs> I'm not going to read the summary for this one because Jen told me it's best to go into it blind and I trust Jen with my whole heart. So that's what we're going to do. I just love Lisa Kleypas. I've also just recently finished the entire Hathaway series and I gave most of those books five stars. So hopefully I give this one five stars too, but I have watched some of my friends' videos recently talking about this book and not everyone is giving it five stars. And so I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. So give me the push I need to read this, okay? The next book on this list is a book that I need to read for the necessity of continuing on with the series. I feel like the whole series could be on this list, but uh, this book is The Fae King's Dream by Jamie Schlosser. The first book, The Fae King's Curse, was amazing. I loved it. A fantasy romance book. The Sun, by the way, not cooperating with me right now is what it is um but this is the second book in the between dawn and dusk series i've read the prequel to this series as well as book one loved both of them if you didn't know this is a fantasy romance series about like fey kings uh and fey royalty uh the males are blind because they got a curse put on them and the only way they can not be blind anymore and to have the curse lifted is if they find their fated mate however when you're blind you can't see your fated mate so it's like a whole complicated thing going on. This one is about Damon and he has dream powers. Okay, so the summary says, the first time I met Damon, he rescues me from a nightmare. Literally, I'm stuck in a coma and my mind is forcing me to relive the horrific accident that put me in this state over and over again. The gorgeous fake king is the only one who can give me peace. As if the dream can't get any weirder, he tells me we're soulmates. He says he could fix my banged up brain. He wants to be my hero. Little does he know I might end up saving him because once I wake up, the real challenge begins. A bunch of vengeful witches want him dead and they'll stop at nothing to seal his fate. But I've got plans of my own, the coven that caused too much tragedy and I'll defend my newfound love even if it's the last thing I do. And it just might be because if Damon doesn't survive, neither will I. That sounds so good. I'm excited. This is like giving me the little push I need. Book four just came out in this series. I, I need to just read it, okay? I need to read more of Jamie Schlosser in general because I freaking love her. This book has like a 4.21 rating on Goodreads. Like it's high. So I'm excited. This book is on KU, by the way. So next is a fan favorite that I haven't read yet. <laughs> We have A Lady of Rooksgrave Manor by Catherine Moon. I think the main reason why I put this book off is because I don't think there's an audiobook and for some reason I want to listen to this book on audio. I don't know why I just do but you know what I don't think it's gonna happen um so I just need to read it on uh, my Kindle. All I know is that this is a reverse harem book that deals with monsters okay. Um <laughs> I know that people love it and um I love monster romances so I'm bound to love this, right? On the brink of losing her position as a maid and with no prospects to go on, the offer of a place at Rooksgrave Manor, a house of ill and unusual repute, sounds like a perfect fit for a young woman with Esther's inclinations. Even better, the invitation comes by the hand of the handsome Dr. Underwood, a delicate gentleman with a ferocious alter ego who knows exactly what he wants from Esther. Upon arrival, the men and the daily decadence of the manor feel too good to be true for a girl of Esther's station. There are rules to be followed, expectations to be met, and Esther is afraid she might be too wicked even for a place like, like Rook's grave. Temptations lurk around every shadowy corner, and Esther has never been a girl able to resist. But the risk of disappointing her new gentleman 
isn't all that's threatening Esther's new position. Rook's grave manners, protections for its unusual patrons are failing. The wards are crumbling and Esther's new and exquisitely pleasurable life may all be tumbling down. Uh, yeah, people love this book. <laughs> and so hopefully I will too. Um, I've just heard amazing things and I love monster romances and I feel like this is like the ultimate monster romance that people love, so yeah <laughs> next is a book that i want to include because i want to like read hopefully the whole series this year so i want to include like the whole series in this uh section but we're just gonna talk about book one so book one is lord of the fading lands by c.l wilson the first book in the terran soul series now i don't know a lot about the series however C.L. Wilson wrote one of my favorite fantasy romance books of all time, which is The Winter King. And I own, I think, all of the books in this series. And so I'm like set up, okay? I need to read them though. The summary is pretty short. It says, this fantasy romance debut, oh, this is her debut? Interesting. Uh, features fairy king Rain Terran, Soul, a man tormented by age-old grief. A thousand years ago, the woman he loved was slain in battle. And in his rage, he laid waste to half the world. Now his people are dying out and the evil mages of Eld are rising again. When Rain hears the call of his lost soulmate, Alaseta, he journeys into the neighboring kingdom to find her. When he claims a woodcarver's daughter as his mate, he scandalizes the nobility of her country and rouses the interests of Eld's wickedest wizards who come seeking her in order to get at Rain. Yo, that sounds wild. That sounds crazy. <laughs> I love C.L. Wilson and I want to dive into more of her books. Um, and so hopefully this one is just as good as The Winter King. I didn't know this was her debut. And so I don't know if the rest of the series is following um, Rain or it's just this one. So um, I guess I'll learn about it soon. Next is another fan favorite. We have The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. <laughs> This is mainly because of Samantha from Books with Samantha, okay? <laughs> if you can tell, a lot of these books are because my friends recommended them. But yeah, I know this is an age gap romance that she just loves. It's like one of her favorite books of all time. It says, nothing says happy birthday like catching your husband in a compromising position with his boss. His male boss. Why, hello, midlife crisis. I'm starting over, but this time I'm doing it right. Or at least I'm doing what I want. Taking the day off to work out poolside? Yep. Do I leave my swimsuit in my house? Sure. Does my hot 20-something pool boy happen to catch me without a top on? Oh yeah, he does. And he likes what he sees a lot. My best friend keeps telling me to have a fling and to get back out there, but I'm not so sure she meant for me to do it with her son. <laughs> so yeah, I've heard this is very taboo. It's an age gap where the woman is older and it's just not so fun and hot. I've read one Nikki Sloan book, The Initiation, and I liked it. Um, but I know that Samantha just adores this and I want to love this book too. So hopefully I gave this one five stars. What would this video be without a Ruby Dixon book? Okay. <laughs> okay. We have Bad Guy by Ruby Dixon. This book is currently sitting in my Libby checkout right now. Like I just got it from Libby, the audiobook for it. I need to listen to it already. I don't know why I'm putting it off. Um, I think it's because I wanted to read the Corsair Brother series first, but those aren't on audio yet. This one is. So I don't know, I'm just putting it off for some reason. I don't need to, okay? Okay, so I've heard great things about this book. I can't wait to read it. Um, so let's read the summary. We have Cruelden the Ruiner is the name of a fierce gladiator who's broken the rules and broken anyone that approaches. It's my name. It's a name that strikes fear into the hearts of all. All except the small human female who comes to clean my cell and glares at me the entire time. My new owners want things from me. They want me to play in their games. They want me to win battles for them. Well, I know what I want in return. I want her. I don't care who I have to destroy to get her. But Mina doesn't want to be owned and certainly not by one as terrible as me. How does a bad guy woo the girl when all he knows is death and destruction? That sounds so good. I did read, I think like the first half of the first chapter one time and I had to put it down because my friend Josie told me that how to read the like the 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 publication order of these books like I normally read Ruby Dixon books chronologically like by publication date and technically Caspar by her came out before this one and so she was like oh yeah Caspar came out first and I was like oh I guess I have to read Caspar first but the Caspar audiobook isn't out yet so anyway I just need to get to this one and I feel like it could be five stars because that sounds so good and I did love like the one chapter that I've read so far um so I'm very excited for this and 
hopefully this will be another Ruby Dixon that I can add to my five star Ruby Dixon collection. Next is one that I'm kind of dreading, but also not. I don't know. I don't know. So I've never read a Mariana Zapata book, okay? Just because they're so long. <laughs> and I'm very intimidated by long books. Um, so yeah, we have From Lukov with Love on this list because I love figure skating and this is a figure skating romance. And so I feel like out of all of Mariana Zapata's books, this one is the one that I could love the most. So the summary for this one is, if someone were to ask Jasmine Santos to describe the last few years of her life in one single word, it would definitely be a four letter one. After 17 years and countless broken bones and broken promises, she knows her window to compete in figure skating is coming to a close. But when the offer of a lifetime comes in from an arrogant idiot, she spends <laughs> the last decade dreaming about pushing in the way of a moving bus. Jasmine might have to re reconsider everything, including Ivan Lukov. I don't know much about this book, all I know is that a lot of my friends love it. It deals with figure skating and I do want to read a Mariana Zapata, but um, I'm very intimidated. I'm, in I'm intimidated to read it, <laughs> but hopefully I love this one. I know some of my friends just adore it. We have Broken Vow by Sophie Lark, and this is everyone's favorite in the series. And I've read up to book three, and this is book five. So I have one more book to read before this one. This is a bodyguard romance. And if you don't know me, I am a complete 100% sucker for bodyguard romances. They are candy to me. I am obsessed with them. Riona Griffin is gorgeous, intelligent, and iron-willed. My perfect woman, except she hates my guts. She thinks she doesn't need anybody, but she needs me. She's being hunted by an assassin who never misses his mark. I'm going to stay by her side day and night, keeping her safe. Riona thinks that's a fate worse than death, but I know she'll learn to love me. If this hitman wants to kill her, he'll have to go through me first. I'm so excited for this book. I don't know why I've been putting it off. I have to read book four. I have book four on audio. I just need to listen to it. <laughs> the last one that I want to mention is, of course, a Britney C. Cherry book. I adore Britney C. Cherry. She's one of my favorite authors of all time. I adore her. She is so incredibly sweet. I have Art and Soul on here. Not a lot of my friends have read this one. The few that have read it have given it all five stars. <laughs> I have high hopes for this, but I don't know a lot about it. So let's read the summary. I had always been the invisible art student in high school, passed by, glossed over, unnoticed. Now I was Aria Watson, that girl. After one bad decision, I was no longer unseen. I was the tramp. I would never be invisible again, particularly to Levi Myers. He was the odd boy with the beautiful soul who accepted and understood the broken girl inside me. Flying in love wasn't the plan, but how could I resist his promises of hope, of forgiveness, of a future I had stopped dreaming of? We were shattered. We were scarred. We were something strange and beautiful. We were two lost souls holding on to the only thing that could keep us together, each other. I don't normally read romance books that take place in high school. The exception is Jessica sometimes, but also especially... Britney C. Cherry. I think she is just an amazing author and she can wreck me and put my heart back together in one book. I love so many of her books and I hope that this could be another one that I just love and adore. So there you have it. Those are some roommates books that hopefully I will give five stars to in 2022. Let me know down below if you want to see a vlog from me reading these. Let me know what you think about these books or which book should I prioritize out of all of them. Please let me know. Give me the push I need. If you've made it this far into the video, leave me a red heart emoji down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.